Yes, folks, we have made it. The 2022 Cheltenham Festival is here and we're here. Yes, welcome along to the Racing Post. Good morning, Cheltenham, with thanks to our sponsors, Paddy Power. And what a panel we have lined up for you today. To my left, we have got my favourite tipster, Mr. Paul Keeley. How are you? Yeah, very good. Looking forward to it. Been a long time coming, isn't it? Yeah, two years a long time, Keel, since we it sat here. It is, in isn't it? Two years. Studio. Yeah, two years since we sat here and weeks and weeks of talking about it and talking's about to stop. It certainly is. Oh. And we have got one of my favourite broadcasters, Miss Matthew Green. How are you? <laughs> too kind, too kind. It feels like the calm before the storm, doesn't it? It's very serene here where we are. It is. Up on the hill on a farm. It's lovely. I wonder will it be like this on Friday? I'm not quite sure. <laughs> I think it's going to get really interesting. <laughs> we might not look the same. <laughs> no, certainly not. No, a bit more ragged. And one of my favourite jockeys, of course, it is 14-time Cheltenham Festival winning jockey, Mr Mick Fitzgerald. How are you? Very well, Dave. Thank it's you. It's great to have you here. Privileged we are, privileged. Uh, just to talk you through our show today, uh, we're going to go through some of the main races each day at the Chetland Festival. We're going to do two, and we're going to have the best bet for each day of the festival. And uh, obviously some breaking news in the last couple of days. We've got Sir Gerhard going for the Ballymore instead of the, instead of the Supreme. Willie Mullins is, is juggling his pieces around the chessboard. But we kind of know now, Mick, the way it's going to go. Sir Gerhard obviously going for the Ballymore. It means Dysart Dynamo goes for the Supreme. And what a race to start the festival. It's, it's as good a Supreme as I've seen for, you know, you have to go back to the Alti or Main Boover there year to have as much strength and depth. I think it's, it's, it's a great way to kick the festival off. You know, there's a lot of talking horses in there. You know, Nicky Henderson, people were saying, oh, he's not going to run two. Well, he is running two. And they're two good ones. And mm -hmm. Constitution Hill, you know, I think he, he could be a bit of a star of the future. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't give it away yet, Mick. Don't give it away yet. We're going to be previewing the race. We want them to stay tuned, so we do. And we're going to be here every day, every day, day at half eight. The Racing Post Good Morning Cheltenham is going to be with you. So we're going to be first with all the news. So, Mick, you were going to give away your supreme tip, but we'll come to that in a minute, OK? I want your favourite 14 Cheltenham Festival winners. I want you to tell me the one you enjoyed the most. The Gold Cup. Winning that on Seymour Business. Like, it's the blue ribbon of steeplechase and bullets the race i think when everybody sets out to breed a horse they set out to breed a gold cup winner and that was a like i i was going up in ireland watching dawn run win the gold cup i saw what that meant to the nation and i thought from that day on i thought if i want to win one race it's the gold cup and to walk down that walkway and and milk that <coughs> that was very special magic First odds on bet of the week up, Mick Fitzgerald picking Seymour business. It's going to be a good week. Natalie Green, give me some of your favourite Cheltenham moments. Can you remember your first time going through the gates? Yeah, I, mean, I can't really follow Fitzy's. I mean, that must be just incredible. But a very, very dear friend of mine, Richard Burton, one of our top amateur jockeys, when he won on Kappa Blur for Sheila Crow in 2009, I was stood with his, well, his wife's my best friend, Hannah, and to see her face, honestly, I, we're just in floods of tears. In floods of tears. We were shaking, Richard came in, it was just... It was absolutely incredible. And I think that is what horse racing does to you. It's emotional. And another really emotional time, my favourite horse ever, really, is Sprinter Sacra, because I just adore him. And when Nico de Boinville came in in 2016, when Sprinter Sacra was back where he should have been in the cream of the champion chase, and his mum, obviously, he'd only lost his mum the month before. Mm. And he was like, you know, that was for you, mum. Again, floods of tears. Couldn't believe it. Oh, you're a big softie. I, could, I was such a softie. But the best moment, seven years ago, I met my now husband in the Guinness Village. And that was your best moment? Yes, oh. I've got to say that, haven't I? Oh, the best Probably. It's too early for <laughs> him, In the him, Guinness actually. Village? It's too early okay, for him. Okay, right, I like this. I like these stories. <laughs> How did he come up? Did, he, did you know him beforehand? No, he'd helped me with some tips for a job I was going for. Okay. I got the job. Um, and then he was in the Guinness Village. He's like, oh, you won't be able to find me. I mean, he's like six foot four and white hair, so I spotted him. He looks like a pint of Guinness, actually, so I spotted him quite easily, so... <laughs> <laughs> so and the rest is, as they say is history the rest is history still happily married yeah so it's your what seventh anniversary Se yeah. yeah this year not married seven years got not that crazy no, married no, no. three years this year from, from the moment that changed your life <laughs> I've actually never heard of anybody going on the pull in the Guinness village <laughs> well there you go <laughs> apart from you Paul Keeley <laughs> uh, pull in the Guinness big week for you big week for you yeah. one of the best tipsters in the Racing Post you can read them every single day in the Racing Post uh, Tom Siegel Paul Keeley you've got to pick up the paper your best position going into the festival. You've been tinkering away behind the scenes with your anti-post portfolio. Yeah, I mean, you know me. I like to look at handicap. There's always there's always one hand one handicapper that I sort of latch onto quite early. And this year is Alaphilippe, 
who runs in the Potemps final on Thursday, hopefully. Obviously, we haven't got any decks yet. But, uh, yeah, he, I just thought he was a monster eye catcher at Warwick uh, at last uh, last time, first one of the season. Interesting race, that, wasn't it? Tugging like mad all the way round, went wide. Careful, uh, out, uh, Careful, out. Yeah, and, and, you know, he just got tired after the last, having looked like he was running all over them. And, you know, got dropped two pounds for that. And... You know, he was fifth in the Albert Barley. He's got 150 chasers either side of him from that. And, you know, he's running off 138. I, I can't see a better handicapped British horse at the meeting, to be honest. And, you know, the worry is whether there's a, a really, really well handicapped one at, uh, in Ireland. I mean, obviously, we think there's probably going to be a few, but I think he's got a massive chance. I'm on at 16s and, you know, he's, he's drifting out a little bit now. He said he was 10s the other day. Or yeah, I think that's because I tipped him on a different show. Oh, I think right, he, started, yeah. he started to drift ever since then. Oh, right, if, thanks. <clears throat> if Alaphilippe wins, mm -hmm. do you have a winning week? Um, I never, ever want to say that I can't lose because, you know, years ago I backed... Um, Accidental agent, first race at, at Royal Ascot, 50 to 1. And I declared I cannot possibly lose this week. And I did my very best to do so for the next. Never had another winner. <laughs> uh, you know, so, you know, I don't want to make any claims like that, but it'll be a, it'll be a good week. And, you know, I, I will, you know, I'll be running out of races by then too. Mm. It'll be, it'll certainly be a help. <clears throat> so, for the rest of the show, we're going to try and find you some winners along the way. As I said, we're going to preview the two main races each day, and we're going to have a charity bet. We're going to have the guys' bets bets. Uh, so, it's going to be an interesting three quarters of an hour or so. So, we're going to kick off with the Arkle on Tuesday. It's the second race on the card, and it's going to be an absolute belter, I think, folks. Edward Stone is currently our 5-2 to two favourite with Paddy Power. It is 7-2 to two about Riviere to tell the mayor from the Gordon Elliott stable. Blue Lord is 15-4. to four. Hot on Colours is 7-1 to one for Brian Cooper, and it is 9-1 to one bar. Mick Fitzgerald, this is a big race for the home team, isn't it? Huge. Yeah, huge. And I think, you know, the first two races are huge for the home team because we look to have a strong hand. This arco, you know, Edward Stone is favourite, and I think he is a worthy favourite. When you ride in an arco, they go quick. And sometimes some of these horses that have been winning Mickey Mouse races with small fields, they get a shock of their lives. Because suddenly, from having a lot of room in a lot of these races, you have the Irish jockeys come over, and it, it becomes very cramped. Space is at a premium. Horses don't have the same elbow and wriggle room that they normally have. So you need something that's kind of on it. And they'll go quick. Like with Magic Days in there, you've got St. Sam. Are they going to ride the horses forward as they did before? Blue Lord's handy. Brave Shaska's handy. Suddenly, that Edward Stone pace that he's got, having run in those big handicap hurdles, he's a strong traveller. That'll stand him in good stead. And I think he'll basically lob round sort of just behind the pace and pick them off. He's slick, isn't he? He's slick over his fence. He lands running all the time, doesn't he? Do you know, I think I think fences have made a man of him. If you watch him and he's hard to race, he's always had that tendency to do too much and mm. over race. Fences make him just back off enough so that he drops it. And I think because of that, he's become quite a strong finisher. I have a question for you now. Graham Rodway in the Racing Post on, Mo on Sunday did this Mythbusters piece, okay? Yeah. Is Cheltenham a tough track to jump around because I've, I've heard from certain jockeys and I'm not going to name any names that they're quite soft fences they are but it's not it's not necessarily how stiff or how soft the fences are it's whether it knocks you out of your stride or whether you lose your position that's where the you know that's mm. where the problem lies you know when you turn for home and you you get to like fourth glass is that ditch jump that well and then you've got a sharp climb if you lose your position there it doesn't matter that the fence is soft but if you lose your position You've got to squeeze to get back into the hole. That's where the petrol gauge starts to go that way. You get to the top of the hill, turn down, boom. If you're not in the right position, you're trying to chase down that hill, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. It's not the fact that the fences are soft or stiff. It's position at the right time. You know, when you ride a good horse, you come back in and you think, well, what was all the fuss about? But if you're riding one that's out of sync or out of rhythm, suddenly it's like driving down a lane with speed ramps going too fast. You just go boom, hmm. boom at everything. You know, and that's why I think something like Edward Stone's going to be in his comfort zone. It's like watching me watching Nick Luck or Gary O'Brien in the presenter's chair. <laughs> it all looks so effortless. And then you sit in the chair 
and then well, it turns. I, I, I think the thing is, I mean, everyone talks about the Cheltenham Hill, and obviously it's stiff, but you've got to remember, it's a sharp track with a stiff finish. Yeah. Right, you know, so being handy and being able to get in a rhythm is very, very important. Mm. And who will get in a rhythm in the arc of? Well, this is this is a difficult one, isn't it? Because there's so many there's so many potential front runners, and I, I'd imagine you know they will all look at it and know that, won't they? Or will they just get on with it and go like bats out of hell? <laughs> like, you know, we, just, we don't we don't know, do we? My my worry with Edward Stone is he's beaten such a small pool of British horses. Mm. Mm. Now I don't believe that the Irish are anywhere near as strong. You know, it's not a it's not a superstar article, is it? You know what I mean? I don't think competitive would be the word, but it's competitive. Mm. Now, I like Saint Sam, who was only third in the Irish article, and he's won. Well, he went too fast then, uh, but he didn't half see his race out well, having made a mistake at the second last, and you know, lost again, lost his position. But he didn't lose any more ground after that, having gone really hard. So, I think he might be able to turn it over with Blue Lord and Riviere de Tell, and the one that keeps banging on my head all the time for no, for any, no reason that I know is that Autumn Killer because mm. his, his winning form was good mm. and obviously he was tried very highly as a juvenile last year first run for Willie Mullins in the in the triumph and he's just maintained that steady price so you know somebody fancies him and the, you know I probably fear him more than the other Irish ones okay so Saint Sam but it's and Saint Autumn Killers yeah. Hmm, interesting. I thought we had a weak hand in this, but Paul Keeley thinks otherwise. Natalie Green, are you an Edward Stone fan? I am. I, I really like really what Fitz said. I, you know, it's undulating as well, like like jumping downhill as well. They have got, the horse has got to be clever and mm -hmm. it they've got to be well balanced. Um I think the negatives, if you look at it with King's record, what is it, eighty six consecutive losses at the festival but I hope very impressive but stat, I know right? I can't believe I remembered that, right? that. very impressive stat Matt. I can't believe I've remembered that and um it, well you read it <laughs> I read it on my oh, own sorry, <laughs> no it's not it's fine, <laughs> it's fine. but Edwardstown I hope that he breaks that for, for Kingy um I totally agree I think the fence has made a man of him a hundred percent this horse has grown up and I actually think his hurdling career has made him I think that's what has made the horse. He wasn't a desperate hurdler, though. You know, he was a solid one, yeah. one high class yeah. handicapper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he was, and I, I absolutely agree how the race will be run. I think Edwardson, the beauty about him is if he gets a nice rhythm, I can see him just picking them off. Mm. The one that I can't ignore, though, is the mayor, Riviera de Tell here for um, the Elliott team. I mean, the, the mayor's allowance, but then she's kind of worse off that two pounds because of the juvenile campaign. Yeah. Mm. So yeah. I'm a bit... Offsets it a little, yeah. It does offset mm -hmm. it, but there's something that just keeps bringing me back to her that I've got to say, I think she's got a shout. I love how she's bred by Martine, and yeah, I think she's now actually a pretty experienced racehorse, mm -hmm. and I like that. So, a bit between the two. You know Jack Kennedy. Yeah. He doesn't give you that much information when you're talking to him. I'm sure you've interviewed him many times. Lovely young guy and the world at his feet. I interviewed him last week, and we were talking about his Cheltenham team. And he offered Riviere de Tell to me as the one he was looking forward to most. Out of the 18, 20 rides he's going to have, Riviere de Tell, without me asking, because that was going to come at the end of the conversation, he said Riviere de Tell. That's very un-Jack-like, isn't it? It is un-Jack-like, but you wonder, is he, is he swayed by the mm. fact that he got beat on her at Leopardstown and he felt that she was unlucky mm. and she should have won? Mm. You know, sometimes as a rider, you have that in the back of your mind. You think, right, I'm going to get compensation. Plus, he's not allowed to tell you about the handicap. No. No. You're yeah, just and ruining it from here. I thought I got a great line. If she'd have got a better jump at the last, I think that's probably I think she'd have won. She'd have yeah, beat Blue Lord, yeah. The last yeah, one. that's it. I mean, I can see Blue Lord being third best of those three. Yeah. 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 It's just, I, I just feel, looking at the race, that I won the race on two, Chev. I finished sixth in the champion hurdle on him the previous year. This horse is quite similar, and I think it's a similar kind of year. There's no standout horse coming mm. from last year into the race, so I think that's why I think it's, it's a very open race. So there you go, folks. It's three votes for the favourite. Edward Stone, who's currently 5-2 to at Paddy Power, and Paul Keeley, he's with St. Sam. That is your Sporting Life article, and the big one on day one, of course, it is the Unibet champion hurdle, and it sees the Queen herself, who's, who's bidding to extend her unbeaten run. It is Honeysuckle, but she faces a stiffer task this year, I think, Heels. Uh, appreciate it. There are people who are willing to take on Honeysuckle this year with Appreciate It, and they are fairly sweet. Gary O'Brien, Matt Chapman, shrewd judges think Honeysuckle could be beaten here. I think she could be beaten, but I can't get 
the enthusiasm for backing a horse that hasn't run for a year. I know, I know it's William Mullins. I know he's done it before, but he's done it with like Quivega and you know, and, and Arctic Fire and that encounter. Yeah, not a champion hurdle giving seventh round to, to to a star mare. I think that's. I think it's really, really hard uh, for him to do that. If I was going to back something, it'd be a Tiapu instead. Mm. Uh, it's actually on official figures. He's the second best horse in the race mm. uh, right. now. We haven't seen appreciate it, so we don't know how good he is now. I mean, he could well have improved, um, you know, for, for staying at home. But he was a horse that, was, that had a problem, so couldn't go and I was chasing, then wasn't ready for the Dublin Racing Festival. So it hasn't been all plain sailing for him, has it? You know, so, you know, I mean, we all know how good Willie Mullins is, and he might, you know, he might win, but he's a short enough price for a mm. year off in a champion hurdle, isn't he? Mm. And I was just really impressed with Tia Poo last time. I think he's coming in, still coming in a little bit under the radar. People don't realise how good he is. And, you know, I think, you know, you can get, I think you can get something like four to one without the fab, which I think is a cracking bet. Mm. Okay, four to one without the fab. Matt, where do you stand with Honeysuckle? Oh, oh yeah, I, and no, not just because it's all gushy and I wanted to win because the crowds have got absolutely mad because they will, but... Yeah, it annoys me a bit when people say, oh, what's she beating? I mean, for goodness sake, she's still a flipping good racehorse, let's be honest. And like you say, with Appreciate It, that huge layoff, yes, if anyone can do it, it is the master. I do like Tia Poo, and what I find really interesting, actually, is um, Elliot saying he's quite a deceiving horse. Like, it doesn't yeah, really... it doesn't work well at home. No, at home. it doesn't work yeah. well at home. Who cares? It works well on the race course. I thought he was going to make a meal of winning that Red Mills last time. Jump in the second last. Yeah. I thought, well, he's, you know, he's, he's working hard. Next thing you know, he's miles clear. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he's, Elliot seems absolutely convinced that he doesn't want the ground like that, although he seems, seems to run him on it an awful lot. So. No, I've got that as well, yeah, and, and better ground. You just, mm. just bounce off it. But you can't ignore, like, I'll just go for bigger prices to try and pick up any pieces if, if the race sort of fell apart. I think Honeysuckle is the winner. But you can't completely ignore Adagio. Um, you can't you can't ignore Zanier. Happy there to you be are talking. happy to be second to Honeysuckle. You can't ignore Zanier. And you know made a terrible mistake at the first as well. Yeah, it yeah. completely. You know, if you in running, you'd be like throwing the race away, but doesn't manages to have quite a resilient character. So there are a couple, but I'm not taking on Honeysuckle. No and way. Henry has said she's bigger, she's stronger, she's better than ever. She and deserves I'm, a proper shout and roar yeah, as well. Yeah. And she, she deserves she to time. shut everyone up. What she ran against, well, she ran against these. So shut up. Yeah, when she's going to shut them up she's now. She's going to shut them up. Mick, is she going to shut them up? <laughs> I think in all likelihood, yes. Okay, but, but you're a bit lukewarm there now. Yeah. Look, I'm not I just, liking this now. I'm not yeah, liking this. I, I, I want to see her win, and I want to see her have her moment, because I think if she does win, I think she'll get an unbelievable reception, because the crowd will make up for what she missed out on last year, which I think will be fantastic. There's a big her. butt coming here. I, you know I just, I'm just a bit worried that she looked really fit when she won at the Dublin Racing Festival. Mm -hmm. She had a hard race, and there's no getting away from it. Henry de Bromhead's horses this year were not are not in the same form as they were last year, so it's not as strong coming in. That's the only concern I have. She's a very short price favourite. I look, I want to see her win. Because, uh, you know, any horse that wins 14 out of 14 and then is trying to go 15 out of 15, you know, deserves the plaudits. But I, I just feel, look, last year, Epitan finished third. Uh, she's in much better form this year coming in. She How won, is she working? Working well. Like the Christmas hurdle, she won very nicely. The form's been franked. I know Dorian Fortune only won a handicap, but at the same time, he's still franking the form. And she won that convincingly. I think she'll run a big race at a big price. Oh, epitant. Interesting. And she is the forgotten one, isn't she? She's Well, she's a champion hurdle winner. It's mm. not like you're thinking, well, will she, will, how will she cope? She's already done it. But the trainer form angle is interesting, though, isn't it? Because we have been talking in the run-up about mm. the, the Nicky Henderson horses, and then he has, goes and has two winners on Saturday and another one yesterday. Henry de Bromid is naught from 17 in March, and mm. only one of, uh, of his last 10 runners has got within 10 lengths of a winner. Right, you know, not ideal. That is, you know, it is a little bit worried. These things can change very quickly. I mean, the, mo the moment you spot that somebody's out of form, yeah. start opposing to horses, they come back. Don't like they? Gavin Cromwell, but, and you know, travel at Navin. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It yeah I wouldn't worry easy, too yeah. much about Nick Henson. I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't because let's look at our British trainers. He's our Cheltenham Festival. Mm. I wouldn't worry at all about Nicky's form. No, but I think yeah. if you look, if you break it down with Nicky's runners in the last three weeks or a month, a lot of them have been big prices. Mm. There has been no real short he's got beat that should have won. The first horse that I felt was going to be the gauge was Lucia in the bumper. 
on Saturday she at Sandown yeah. and she bolted up. Uh, yeah, and then, of course, he had another winner that afternoon. Mm. He had Highland won for him yesterday at Warwick. So, you know, when I was there on Thursday morning, it's the last big schooling morning. And there was about 30 horses schooling. Every single horse that walked past me, you just like you, your eyes were following them because they all looked well. It's a really good buzz, like at the yard. Yeah, the yard looked that has led me in beautifully, Nat. Okay, because I want to know from you, Constitution Hill, John Bond. Who does Mick Fitzgerald think will win the Supreme? Constitution Hill. Talk to me about him. What's his work like? What's he like as an individual? Well, look, I, I'm not lucky enough to be able to to ride him work, but his work has always been been good. And he, he's just a very thorough, professional racehorse. And he walks past you, you don't even notice him. Uh, he just gets on with it. And like he schooled the other morning. I was just a little bit worried. Nicky had to, to water his schooling strip just to make sure that, you know, it was, it was not too quick. And I thought it'll be interesting to see how he copes with this going to gallop up here on this quicker ground. Like, honestly, of all the horses that schooled, he was the most impressive. There you go, folks. That is Constitution Hill. Is he going to get the Cheltenham Festival off to a flyer on day one? Your best bets on day one, folks. Best bet. Keels, if you were to only have one bet on Tuesday, as mad as that sounds, uh, what would it be? Yeah, that's completely mad, obviously. Um, <laughs> yeah, burning victory in the mares. Uh, I think pr- pretty much everybody is off in four places. Uh, she was two one on to beat. Queensbrook mm. last time and she did and she was always in command that day I know Queensbrook closed her down at the end and is three pound better off but Queensbrook is fours and she's eight and that doesn't make Paul Townend's not riding her yeah I don't care about that I mean he's got to make a choice isn't he like you know I mean so there's so many horses that Willie Mullins can have run mm. in these races with chances like you know he's got to make a choice I can't imagine they're all that easy uh, but yeah I can't see her she's a triumph hurdle winner remember fortune at one but beat some there were some good horses behind her, Aspire, Tower, and All Mankind were third and fourth. So, you know, and I think with four places each way, it's cracking each way back. Burning victory in the Mayor's Hurdle for Keels, for Nat. I can't believe you've gone for the Mayor's. Because <laughs> I have with Stormy Island. <laughs> <laughs> Stormy Island. Isn't she a funny story, though? Mullins, mm-hmm. Nichols. Yeah. I don't think Nichols would have been a massive fan of her. I think she... Um, couldn't put it together. I'm telling you now, if that wins a job, oh. Paul Nichols will not be happy. He will <laughs> puke. He will puke, but she, he, she, he just, she couldn't get it together for Nichols. I don't know why. I don't know what happened. She's gone back to Mullins. Um, I know the people that bought her, actually. They were a really good little racing group. Obviously, she recently won at Cheltenham, and she did it brilliantly. And it's maybe it's a bit the steering because I know the owners behind it. But I think she's grand. I think that when these, these mares are in good form and on a recent win at Cheltenham, I'm hoping she's just going to be all guns blazing. She's in confidence. She's in good form. And hopefully, and also, yeah, she's going to be a very exciting brood mare as well to watch out for. Um, but yeah, I'm really keen on Stormy Island. So viewers are looking for... I don't want to take on Keels. Yeah. <laughs> viewers are looking for a lucky 15 for the opening day of the Cheltenham Festival and bang, it's gone already. Two in the one race. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> best of luck to both of you. Make your best bet on day one. Edward Stone in the Arco. And for me, it is the tie turns in the Boodles. I think he could mm. give Gordon Elliott another win in the race. And Jack Kennedy, that is day one, moving swiftly on to day two. And the first race we're going to preview on day two is the Brown Advisory Novices Chase. And this is going to be a corker. And Nat Green, I have to come to you here first, because Ahoy Senor, I am a massive fan, on, a, a fan of, and I know you are too. Yeah, I am, I, because it was... August 2021, I went up to Lucinda's for the open day. And they have a, a lot of nice type, like they pick nice type horses. Mm. You know, they have a lot of horses and they're all coming into the arena and parading around. And when a Hoy Senor came in, everybody just shut up. Every, Even you. E- <laughs> Sorry, that was harsh. <laughs> that, oh, that was harsh. Oh, that exactly no blow, no blow. Exactly. Sorry. Do you ever shut up? No, not Sorry. really. No. But when he came I in, apologize. He, don't apologize. It's to only me. Monday. Even I shut up. And he just came in and he was like, he was like a different breed. He's like, he's just a big unit. He's a big thoroughbred. He's got a big neck on him. He was like strutting around, owning the place. He's really sharp when he came out, showing off. Um, this is a high senior now, not your husband. Hoi- oh, sorry. <laughs> this is a high senior. Okay. Just <laughs> to be clear. <laughs> My husband does not strut. Um, but well, I saw him that day, and then I loved this because I had him very, very, very early for the racing post as my anti post. Oh, well done. A, a big. I seen it's big, pinned, it's big, pinned on your Twitter account. Big. Yeah. It's pinned. Yeah. It's First thing I saw, yeah. Good, thank you. You talking I'm about I'm going to claim that. I'm going to claim that. Um, and then what was nice is I was at Kelso um, 
you know, just a week ago, two weeks ago. And Lucinda actually brought a hoisting yaw to the race course for a, a jump around uh, with Mighty Thunder so she could just get him to go downhill a little bit at, at a good gallop. And they were really pleased. So that's good. Good preparation for me. I love it. The heart and the head say a hoist in your... Yeah, he, he's, he's a bit raw. He's not... Or you might think people could argue he's not the finished article, but I think that Kelso um, gallop and jump after racing, I think, has put him on. They know what they're doing. Peter yeah. Scudamore knows what he's doing. I think he does too. Yeah. I'm a high senior fan as well. Yes. Mick, talk to me about Brave Man's game. This horse is electric over his fences. He's beautiful to watch. Are you worried about the hill at all for him? I'm, more, I'm worried about a, a, a group of things, really. Uh, like last year, I was doing the starts. Uh, when he ran in the Ballymore. And he was down at the start, and honestly, he walked past me at the start, got his girth checked, really, really happy. And then I watched him literally melt before my eyes. Really? Before the start. Like, honestly, there was no crowd, nothing. But he he got himself in a little bit of a state. You could see he was shaking. You know, he, he literally melted before me. This is the first time I've heard this, so this is very and interesting. Yeah. So, like, that's a concern for me. You know, he got himself very warm before Newbury. He is that kind of horse. And you just wonder, you know, how will he cope with all of that? You know, like the crowd going to be there as well this year. It's going to be a hell of an atmosphere. Uh, like, uh, that's, I'm a little bit concerned about that. And on that, like, I was very surprised that Gallard and Manil passed him on the run. I don't mind. Bob Ollinger's a freak. Yeah, yeah. I don't mind that. Yeah. But Gallard and Manil passed him. So what you said before the race obviously impacted on that. I think there's no doubt about it. Absolutely no doubt about it. I think that's that's the concern that I have with him. Um, I don't think you can question his form. You can't question his ability. You can't question his jumping. He's very solid on all fronts. But I just that's that would be my concern with him. Who will beat him if he is beaten? Do you know? Look, you you've shown the betting like Gallop and Deschamps, but still showing at odds on. Mm. Like. So after all this talk about oh, the horse well, is going here, horse is going there. He can't, he can't. You've got to, you're, we are an hour away from, from I know, it's so annoying, time, isn't it? And it wouldn't be, you know, you wouldn't be monstrously surprised, no. would you? So you see on your screens at the moment, four to five, Gallop in the Sham, seven to four, Brave Man's Game, seven to two, Long Press, five to one, a high senior. Mickey can't do it to us, can he? Uh, look, it's Willie Mullins. Willie <laughs> does what he feels is right at the time. He isn't worried about what people are going to say. No. That's just Willie. You know, he'll do what he feels is right. And when he's there looking at the decks and he sees a scenario like you have in the National Hunt Chase on Tuesday where there's only five, six declared, do you think he's going to say... <sighs> you think Bob will be in the back of his mind? I don't know. Possibly. But at the same time, is he going to let a race go that he thinks that Gallop and Deschamps is four to five for? Yeah, well, we'll find out in about an hour, Mick. Yeah. So yeah. it'll be very interesting to see. Well, right, here's the other thing, Dave. If, I mean, they're all going to be sitting over there, over their computers, making their declarations and watching what each other's doing. If Gallup and Deschamps' name comes on here, what price Brave Man's game goes, goes against Bob Ollinger? <laughs> this is you like a theorem. What, what would you do? You, you, go, you go to a race where you've got one horse to beat or you go to a race where you've got three very good ones to beat. You have to think about it, aren't you? Let's assume, if we, you know, if we go back to who's going to win this race and assume that Gallup and Deschamps doesn't get declared, which, you know, yeah, Willie's been telling us that would be the case. Um, I think... I don't think I've ever seen a race, actually, where there's top three in a bet, and I want them all to win, because I love all of them. Yeah. Old Man's Game, yeah. Hoist, Long Press, eh? And Long yeah. Press is just, you know, it's just fantastic. Every bit as good a jumper as Brave Man's Game. Uh, shapes very much like it'll stay the trip, um, and I love him a bit, so, you know, I'd be I'd be leaning towards him. But, uh, you know, is it going to be one of those races where I don't think I can actually have a bet in it, because I would really be happy to see any of them win. A Hoist, you know, you know, reminds me a little bit about Denman, but without quite having the jumping ability at yeah. the moment. Mm. You know what I mean? Such a powerful galloper. He's, he's if he gets it right, big engine, he's going he's, he's to be hard to beat. Yeah, but do you think this it. race is so fascinating? Like, your long press day, he's efficient, more efficient. You know, yeah. Not massively exuberant, sort of gets from A to B, which sometimes is a good thing because it's clever and wily, isn't it? You don't always need to do too much. Um, but Venetia, I know we don't see her as a festival trainer. She's very good in December, January, February. But if the horse is good enough, the horse is good enough. But it's, it's fascinating to see their jumping technique. And the horse, you know, you, you just like, keep it together, mate, aren't you? Yeah. You know, you don't yeah, he, that keep is it together, the, mate. That is the question mark with him. But don't, like a lot of people were making a lot of the fact that he got beat around Kempton. 
I, I wouldn't be in the, in the slightest bit concerned about that. Like he just, he looked like he was lost going around there. The yeah. track just didn't suit him at all. Okay. He was raw, wasn't he, that day? He was raw, so hopefully he will be the real deal because I'm a massive Ahoy Senior fan in the Brown Advisory Novices Chase. We'll find out in about an hour or so, a little more, if Galpin the Shams is going to turn up here instead of taking on. Bob Ollinger moving on to the big one on Wednesday. What a race we have in store here, folks. It is the champion chase. And it's Shishkin, it's Energamin, it's round two. We've got Shaq and Bersois in there as well, Matt. Um, the big three, is it okay to focus on them or do we need to go lower down? Um, I think I love Shishkin and oh, for so many reasons that um, Kiel's and, and Fitz are probably going to say, but Asuka, look, Shishkin a bit to the left a little bit and a little bit to the right. So Shishkin for me at Cheltenham, perfect, not worried. Um, I don't care if they make a little bit of a mistake. He's got that resilience. What is amazing about Shishkin is it fights. Like mm. The horse wants to win. Mentally, the horse wants to win. I absolutely love that. And I'm not going to ignore Nubi Negra. I know Dan has made it very clear his, how he's taken it this year. From December, early December, he made the decision. I'm going to keep mine fresh. Nubi Negra, it's got a shout, honestly. Mm. Um, but Shishkin, Shishkin, oh, what a dream that is. For a racehorse, he's got everything. Beautiful. Mick, I'm going to ask you a very hard question now. I'm going to give you a prior warning here. It's 2033, okay? And you have to rank <laughs> Printer Sacra, <laughs> Altior, and Shishkin in order. It's 10 years' time. We're all sitting here a bit greyer, a bit balder. I want you to rank in order one, two, three. How do you think we're going to be ranking Shishkin, Altior, and Sprinter Sacra? Good question, isn't it? It is a very good question. How did that one? <laughs> Shishkin, Shishkin has to win two champion chases to equal Altior. Do um, you have to predict whether he will or not for this question? Yeah, well, I think I think we could have the potential that Shishkin could be the could be the number one. No, better than Sprinter Sacra. Yeah, he's everything, isn't he? He's just well, no. Well, when you think about it, like this is probably contentious, but Sprinter Sacra didn't win a supreme. No, Altior did. One of the best supremes that we've seen for some time. He won the Arkle. He won two champion chases. You can't get away from that. Mm. Wow. I don't think I'll ever see a better two more chaser than Sprinter Sacra. I completely no. agree. No. When he's when he was that in his best. in his absolute pomp. Like there, he and like to walk past you, there is no like you're talking about, you know, Mr. Universe type stuff. Yeah, like yeah. When he walked past you, everybody looked at him. Everybody. You got to remember, he was able to—he was able to be a stone below his previous best and win the champion chase from under so for, mm. the, for a second time at an advanced age. Uh, you know, he was exceptional. He was, he was exceptional, the real deal. But Shishkin, obviously, this is his biggest test. He's facing Energamine again, but he's never ran against Shaq and Persois. You obviously think he can do it. Well, yeah. But look, the, the Shaq and Persois angle—like, why didn't he win last year? Like, it was a weak race last year compared to this year. And he didn't win. So that's, you know, I don't, you know, I'm, I love a bit of nostalgia and I love, you know, the romance of it all. Mm. But Keels is a fax man. And like, he's always telling me, you know, don't be getting carried away by stuff that, you know, that's flowery. You know, look at the facts. <laughs> Does that to me, do you, Keels? <laughs> Giving up with me. Giving up with me. Doesn't like your dress so, that leaves a few flowers on that. <laughs> yeah, too many flowers on but that. It's hard because of, because of what Willie says about Shaq and Pussois as well. He's like, it's basically his, his favourite horse, isn't it? He does. Yeah, but you wait for Dex. Him. You wait for Dex. Paul Townend, if he's riding Shaq and Pursois, then you'll yeah, believe I mean, it. And he won't, yeah. Willie. Yeah. I mean, he just seems like a hometown boy, Shaq and Pursois, yeah. doesn't he? He's great at home. Like, you know, and it wouldn't surprise me if he could serve it up. If they, if they all ran... Uh, to their punches math. down, say. Uh, you know what I mean? If it was very, very close. Can't really have him there. See, but you, you can see Nubi Negra yeah. absolutely can yeah, yeah. about I the can. second last, but he won't get up the hill as well as some of the others. He won't He won't get past you know, the And my issue is getting... He's, he's getting well, I mean, Shishkin's going to be the one... Shishkin will not be in front jump in the last. I'm pretty sure of that. No. Right. I actually think he needs a trip. I think he's very fast, but I think he needs a trip. And, you know, uh, in a... You know, in a different yard, he'd be running in a Gold Cup next year for sure. Mm. Like, you know, I think he's a really, really strong stayer. And you got to you got to remember, if 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 the Clarence House Chase was run over the same chip trip as the Champion Chase, Energy Mean would have won because he, he couldn't have got there any earlier than no. he did, Chiskin. And that's the only thing; it is a shorter trip. You have got to remember that. 
Um, in his favour, of course, is left-handed track because he, you know if he edges to his left, it won't matter so much. And the long running because that's you know that's his domain. It's I think his... he, I think he'll win, but I'd love to see him go up in trip. I and, then, did... and then Nicky Ernst will moan like, "Man, why you keep telling me to run <laughs> these horses?" <laughs> 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 I I did a preview night with Dave at Mullins, and like that. At the time, Willie Mullins had said, Shaq and Persuade, it's no contest. And Willie Mullins said, who's better, Shaq and Persuade or Renner Gamine? And I put this to David Mullins, and he thought it was the most ludicrous question he had ever heard. He said that Renner Gamine is the best horse in Willie Mullins' yard, and Paul Townend will definitely ride him. He's like you, Mick. He's, he's convinced yeah. that Renner Gamine is the, is the best of those two. Yeah. But are we four votes for Shishkin here? Yeah, I think he win. Yeah. Yep. We've got the full house. It's Shishkin. He's going to win the champion chase on his way to becoming better than Sprinter Sacra, would you believe? <laughs> uh, best bet on day two, Paul Keeley. Oh, gosh. Uh, you know me, I love a handicap. I just think the form of the Greatwood handy, Greatwood Hurdle uh, in November is really good. Compond was fourth from that. Mm. Absolutely stacks of winners come out of it. And he's been... He's been kept quiet since, hasn't, hasn't been out. So I think this is a plan. Philip Hobbs, J.P. McManus. Philip Hobbs has won the race twice. Uh, I think he's got a good chance. That makes two of us. Two votes for Capron. Ooh. My best bet also on day two of the Cheltenham Festival. Matt Green, your best bet oh, on Wednesday. Oh, you fickle, you, you, you. Hoy senor, are you switching? I was leaving him for you. I was oh, being a gentleman. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, thanks. Um, only because it's not just been, uh, it's been my anti-post. It's been the horse. Yeah, I fo- I'm not going to um, jump ship now on him. I'm going to keep senor. the faith. I'll be cheering him on with you, Nat. Mick, Wednesday's best bet? I am going to go for before midnight in the grand annual. Oh. Just, to, just to upset Keels. Tell us more. Well... We were, I was chatting to Keels uh, and we were talking about horses that have similar sort of profiles and Before Midnight is one that Keels <laughs> has said from the start, right, I think this horse could be another Sky Pirate and I watched him Ain't jump. off him like I did Sky Pirate. <laughs> and I watched him jump and I watched him travel and I thought, you know what, this horse is tailor-made for two mile around there. He's a really strong staying horse. And I think, you know, those sort of horses who were good jumpers. I thought he was disappointing when he ran at Ascot and won and beat a Moolah Gold. You know, he went up a little bit in the weights for that win. I wouldn't be concerned about his last run because he was trying to take on Shishkin. But I mm. think, you know, in, in a handicap where his jumper can be really used to good effect, I think he's... Well, actually, there. his second to um, Fun and Bill Civil is pretty good, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, very good. Because like, you know, he's yes. won the game spirit. Tough. Spin, so. Yeah, I can't argue with that, Mick. I'll have to have a saver. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I made a mess of the race last year. I so quite like that time white, the nickels in that, in the Grand Annual. Yes. It looks a powerful, very well at Doncaster. Very yeah. powerful horse. But you're sticking with high senior. Of the course. decision is made. It's made. That is your best bet on day two. Moving on to day three, and I was hoping to preview Bob Ollinger v Gallop and the Shams, but we're not quite sure yet whether this big battle is going to happen yet. But let's pretend it does, okay? For the yeah. purposes of the show, let's pretend it's Gallop and the Shams v Bob Ollinger. I can't wait, Mick. Who's the best of them? How good are you taking it, Dave? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, who do you fancy? Oh, uh, look, if, you're, if it's a jumping contest, Gallop and the Shams wins every day. Because he is a better jumper. There's no two ways about it. But I think if you're asking me who's the better racehorse, it's Bob Ollinger. Mm-hmm. It's just whether he can put the two together. That's going to be the million What's dollars. more important, ability between the fences or ability over them? That's a loaded between. question. That's between, a loaded surely question. it's between. Of course it is. Yeah. When, I, when you land over the back of the last and they kick Bob Ollinger in the belly... He's got more kick. I've seen group horses come from the flat and try hurdles. Yeah, and, and they can't jump as their you. life. Yeah. All right? And a lot slower horses beat them. Yeah. Mm. All right? Now, let, let's not say that Bob Ollinger is a bad jumper because he isn't. Like, you know what I mean? But I think that Bob Ollinger, it takes more effort for him to yes, jump a fence correct. than it did a hurdle. Yeah. And I think cumulatively that adds up over time and it takes a little bit away from what you've got left at the end. Mm. And therefore, I have a feeling that he is not going to be the superstar over fences that he looked like he was over, that he was over hurdles. I could be completely wrong about that. So, so but, does that mean but, um, he's beaten here? Uh, I like galloping the Trump, Yeah, yeah. I think you, I, I just think he'll keep galloping, and if Bob Robinson doesn't get him right, he'll be in trouble. So galloping will keep galloping. Yes. <laughs> See what you did there. Very impressive. <laughs> Nat, Bob, or galloping? Yeah, galloping the Trump, His performance. 
shut me up. So if any horse can shut me up during a race, I literally just sat there, watched it, tweeted it, by the way, because I couldn't believe what I'd seen. I mean, everything I love in a race horse. I mean, yeah, exuberant, but phew, class to die for and hopefully a gold cup horse. Galloping de Champ. Hopefully this time next year we'll be sitting in these very seats talking about Galloping de Champs and Bob Ollinger running in the Chetlam Gold Cup. The feature race on Thursday is, of course, the Paddy Power Stairs Hurdle and it is hugely competitive this year, Keels. Uh, we've got certainly four towards the top of the market. Uh, last year's winner, Flooring Port, is your 3-1 favourite with Paddy Power at the moment and did a brilliant piece of work in Fairy House a couple of weeks ago that uh, poked a lot of eyes out from, from eyewitnesses. Um, is he going to do it again, Flooring Porter? He's a bit mad, isn't he? If he doesn't boil over, I think he'll win. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I think he, well, he obviously had excuses the first time this season because he fell, but he was going to win that race and, you know, Classical Dream stole a fair martyr on him next time. He hasn't been seen since. It all depends because the last time he ran in front of a crowd, he was only rated 122 and he was on his toes that day and missed the break. Uh, you know, he is a bit of a nutcase. I mean, you see him turn it to face, uh, someone put it up on Twitter, didn't he? Turn it to face the snapper <laughs> jump in the last, last year. Uh, so he's obviously, you know, we've got, you've got to see, you know, he's not going to get dramatically shorter um, on the day than he is now. And you want to see how he goes on in the paddock and how he gets down to the post and everything before you start getting involved because there's going to be a lot of noise that he isn't used to. Otherwise, I think he's the best horse in the race. Are you going to tip a 3-1 to favourite here? This is very young keels like uh, No, I won't tip him because of those concerns. Oh. I may, you know, I'm going to be there. I may back him if he gets through it all. Um, but I can't tip him because of those concerns. Well, what are you going to tip um, him? Nothing, because I don't want him to win. I mean, look, you've got old horses in there like Champ and Paisley Park. Older horses just don't <laughs> win, do they? Like, you know what I mean? Especially, you know, it's 1987 the last time, or 1986 or so the last time I... Uh, horse old, Embers. ten or older, Crimson Embers, yeah. Good oh, memory. Uh, so you know, and and I don't know what else I fancy. Um, That's all right. That's all right, Keel. You know, That's so, all right. So can I sit one out for you? Once? Can it's very there. rare for me. Go up to the bar and get me a pint. Of oh. right. uh, are you more confident here than Keel's now? No, I, this is nuts. This bonkers. This race. It's bonkers. It mm. is like a yeah, a, a rock band. That it is like a rock band. Honestly, it's like guns a, and roses. It's giving like an explosion. I mean. Florin Porter, Hothead, Paisley Park, you know, only because Aidan knows him so well. He's a quirky monkey. Um, mm. Like Ruby said, he would have taken him back mm. home, lad, but, you know, Aidan knows mm. him. Um, I mean, it's, it, it's nuts. There's so, so many quirks. Mellon likes to come second. Let's, you know, we can go on and on. I'm going to have a, a bit of each way on Royal Kahala. Oh, yeah. Peter Fahey horse. She ran. Will yes, she, run? she goes here. Yeah, she Definitely does. runs here, kids. Well, Buy the race and post and you will read stuff like of that. the ground. She runs in the stairs hurdle. Yeah, she yeah. runs and... As revealed in the racing post. Good comes in that. good form and obviously... We're on a farm. Where are we going to get that? Where are we going to get the racing post I'll from? buy you one today, OK? <laughs> well, yeah, we're on a farm. Oh, you're download on... it. Download it. <laughs> Look, Mick Fitzgerald can download it. Download it. Um, yeah, so no, I think I'm, I'm fair here looking at the top of the market. Look, there's so many quirks with these horses. It, it is quite bonkers. And Royal Kahala here, at a good price, currently 9-1. to one. Peter Farhi is in good form. Why not? Not, not a strong opinion, but it's a, it's an opinion. It's an opinion. It's more than Keels, yeah. <laughs> we'll pay you Keels as fair. Uh, Mick, what do you like in the stairs hurdle? I think, but you know, <coughs> uh, Paul and Natalie both outlined the reasons why Flooring Porter carries a bit of a health warning for punters. Yeah. You know, that is the, the obvious concern. But I, you know, look, Time Hill is a horse who comes in here fresh. I like him. Uh, the ground drying out will be a positive for him. It'll help him get. You know, finish the race off really well. I just feel that as a fresh horse coming in here, there's no no guesses about him. Um, and I, yeah, he he's the one that I like. I think yeah, they've deliberately targeted this. The Philip Hobbs team are in very good form as well. I think that's that's a, another key. Goes so well fresh as well. Yeah, mm. he's got a good record for it. Two votes for Time Hill in the stairs hurdle for myself and Mick Fitzgerald at seven to two with Paddy Power. Best bet on Thursday, Mick. Oh, it's unoriginal, but Alaho. I think it's a good thing. Alaho for Mick. For I'm, I'm afraid that's mine. Mm. I'm sorry, but that's no, definitely that's perfectly mine. Fine. Alaho. Perfectly fine. 100%. I am going to go for Grand Paradis in the plate. I think he's a great at horse running and a handicap for you, kids. I'm going to go for Ala Philippe. Oh, I see what you did there. there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, Ala Philippe in the Can plate. I give a shout out for the Lansing Queen in that plate? Can indeed, yeah. I think she's got a very strong chance. I went back and watched that race again. 
Yeah, be a bit bolder. Good. Make that your best bet instead of Ella Holy. Okay, all right, then. Okay. Yeah, I'm not, I, mean, I might even do a forecast because everyone's like <laughs> slating Shamblu saying he's flat track. There's a, I wouldn't be surprised if Shamblu chased Ella Ho home. I wouldn't. You People, wouldn't there's a lot of negativity about Shamblu. Uh, it's extremely bold from Dan, Dan Skelton to campaign him extremely. the way he yeah. Extremely. He's got to be so confident because he could have run in that three mile handicap chase at Kempton worth 100%. 150 grand off a mark of 148 and it'd have been borderline odds on. Yeah. Because, you know, his, his mark had to stay the same because he fell three out at, at, at Weatherby. So he must have real confidence in the horse. His father's like, you know, one of the best show jumpers in the world. Like, they know a bit too about jumping horses. And honestly, yeah, there's, yeah, there's been a bit of criticism about Shamblu. He, oh, oh, he, he can really jump Shamblu. Yeah, he's, like, yeah. yeah. he's like one of those good horses. When, when good horses make mistakes, they don't know what to do because they're just they not used to it. Yeah. Long, short, ah, don't you? Yeah. But, so I'm going to be... We're doing can a I show think... here now, you know that? It feels like we're in the pub here now. Oh, yeah, well, I'm going to be We're doing a show. We have to move on to Friday. Go big or go home. Forecast. I'll You're getting very Shamblu. excited there, OK? Very Forecast. Excited. Forecast, okay, yeah. and you're with Alaphilippe. Yep. And you're gone Lance to the Glance and Queen. Queen. Yeah. And uh, what did I go for? I can't even remember. Grand parody <laughs> in the place. <laughs> Ooh, we got there. <laughs> Moving on to Friday, the JCB Triumph Hurdle. And Keels, you have a terrific record in this race. Uh, at the moment with Paddy Power, Vauban is your 13 to 8 favourite. Pi Piper is 5 to 2, 11 to 2, Phil Door, and it is 9 to 1 bar. Keels, I forgot to you do, Barclay. You got the forecast. Oh, You're talking about forecast. Winner, Barclay beats <laughs> Mr. Adjudicator, and you did the forecast that day. Yeah, I did. Yeah, it was, it was, it was actually a bank of forecasts. It was one of those. I mean, it, that is the second time that a Gordon Elliott horse has got beat in Ireland, at a, a, you know, uh, and then come back and return, reverse the form. Uh, Tiger Roll being the other one, mm. uh, of course. So, you know, he'll be open to do, be able to do that with Fedor against Vorban, but I think Vorban is something else altogether. And I was just really impressed with him at Leopardstown. Uh, he just took those three lengths out of Fedor very quickly, very easily. Um, you know, they think he's, you know, potentially very, very good. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we, we have to wait and see. Obviously, Pied Piper was impressive at Cheltenham, but, you know, they were proper old British trees, those, weren't they? You know what I mean? And it's just, you know... <laughs> Big old ones. Yeah, it's just, you know, you, you, you can get carried away by the visual impression sometimes. Mm. And I think it will be a lot harder. And I think Vauban's going to be very hard. And I think Vauban isn't even a horse for now. I think he's a horse for the future as mm. well, by all accounts of Willie Mullins. Are you a Vauban fan? Yeah, I am. You please know. Don't have too much to say on this one. Um, I thought Porticello could be a bit of an each-way squeak, just for a bit of fun. Double figures. Quite like the way Porticello But it needs a drop of rain for him to be at his yeah. best. Yeah. So. Fair amount for us Wednesday now, isn't but it? Yeah, Wednesday, there is. Wednesday, it says persistent from the West. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I didn't do my weather oh, report. We meant to do that at the start. The clock, of course, John Pullen, <laughs> something I do know, I love John. Um, he was saying one to two mil on Wednesday, but actually when I rechecked, um, it looks like it could be persistent coming in from the west. So then I was thinking, you see. They'll be hoping it's not persistent because they've put some water down on that new course. And if they, if they do get heavy rain on top of the track that's been watered, that'll turn soft. And Yeah. So well, I, look, that was impressive. Lucy, it, better watch out. I, I, I agree. Look, I've got it here. Good, soft, soft in place in the old course. Don't read soft, it. Don't ruin it. Don't read places. it. And the new course, I have to read it because I'll get the wrong course. Yeah, you have to pretend there's a green screen behind you. But you're a Vauban fan. Yeah. Vauban fan. Are you a Vauban fan? Vauban. Porticello, if it's raining. Um, yeah, yeah, we get it in. Porticello each way as well. For Nat, it's four votes for Vauban, though. Moving on to the big one. We're getting there. We're near the end. We're on to the big one. It is the Boodles Cheltenham Gold Cup. And this is obviously the highlight of the week, but it's a corking race this year, Mick. You've won it. Yeah. You know what it takes to win it. Which of the field this year has what it takes to win it? I just think Galvin uh, is ticking a lot of the right boxes in form at the right time. He's got a very good record at the festival. Um, yeah, you know, I think Davy Russell on board is a, you know, he's got a huge part to play in that. Uh, but, you know, you look to all the runners, there's so many of them in here with very strong Cheltenham form. You know, Manella Indo's got a good record at the festival. He's won an Albert Bartlett, should have won an RSA, won the Gold Cup last year. You know, even Aplutard, who's favourite, is a festival winner, placed in a Ryanair, second in the Gold Cup last year. Album Fall has won two Gold Cups. Suddenly you're looking, there's quite a lot of strength in here. There is. Um, at the moment with Paddy Perrett, it's, it's actually joint favourites, Galvin and Apple Tower, 130, uh, 9 to 2, Manila Indo, and then Protectorat, Paul Keeley, who you've been rabbiting on about for the last six months, it feels like, and <laughs> the closer the race is getting, the more confident you're getting. Yeah, I tend to be like that because you get more excited, don't you? And I tend to be quite bullish when it comes to 
when it comes to punting and, and then normally leave with my tail between my legs. No, that is not true. No. And regular uh, readers of the Racing Post will know. Uh, but I am. Yeah, I am a big fan. I, I, look, I know he's got a fair bit to prove because he's... You know, he only beat Native River last time, but it's just the way he went through that race. Because I was, you know, I was, I was laying him. I was, I was standing in the, in the middle of the, uh, uh, indoors at, uh, in the Tingle Creek meeting at Sandown, and I thought this horse cannot tug like this on that ground against those strong stones and and, and stay. And he's going to stop. He's going to fall down a hole in a minute. And he didn't. And he just canted all the way around. So he proved, you know, he proved he stayed. He's a great one winner at two and a half mile. Now I like, you know, everyone says you got to stay and all that stuff. And I love a bit of grade one form at shorter for going in the Gold Cup. You look at the horses that have won it. Size King King. On, Kicking King, King, War Attrition, Quarto, Desi, like, you know what I mean? And he's got that. He's proved he stays. He can, you know, he will be able to lay up with the pace. Uh, and it'll is he good enough? It'll be is he a end. Gold think, Cup winner? Like? Yeah, but how good is this race? I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's so open because it isn't a brilliant race. Uh, you know, you can pick holes and everything. Mm. Apple Tar. Look great at Haydock, obviously, but a, a weird one. You know, you get a lot of horses flattered by uh, winning the Betfair Chase. Normally, mm. the ground's too soft, but the ground actually was too fast for all his rivals. Uh, you know, he looked great there, but he got beat by Galvin. He gets beat too often. He's only won five chases. Mm. Right, you know, to be a Gold Cup favourite, Manila Window's been a stone below form all year. Now, we know about his Cheltenham record, but he wouldn't be the first horse to come to... It wouldn't be the first Gold Cup winner to... Uh, Never be the same horse again. No. Uh, album photos too old. <clears throat> what did you say no. to me last night? You would not back Manila Indo at twenty five to one here. No, uh, I think I laid a bit. No, max bet twenty five p though, wasn't it? <laughs> so it's protector out for Paul Keeley. Protector out for me. Yeah. Finished the week on a high. Now, what do you fancy? I'm very warm on Galvin. Very very warm. Um, done nothing wrong. Obviously, emphatic win at Cheltenham. Um, Savile's been brilliant over Christmas. Gordon seems to be. Yeah, he's getting jiggy, isn't he? Getting jiggy, which I yeah. quite like. And he doesn't get that jiggy, does he? He's quite a serious chap in interviews. He's kind of, but he's getting jiggy about Galvin. And I've loved this horse for, for weeks and weeks and weeks. It certainly wouldn't switch now. And I think Galvin's absolute cracking. And actually, he's just improved immeasurably from going over fences. That's exactly what you want to see for me for a Gold Cup horse. Mm. Mm, Galvin, very interesting. He certainly will stay anyway, I think. Yeah. Mick, what have you come down on? Galvin. You're Galvin as well? Yeah. What were you, Dave? I, started on Galvin. <laughs> I, I, I'm very strange in that. I think Aplutar doesn't fit the profile, obviously, because he's been beaten in the race. But I think his jumping is better this year. He was brilliant in the Betfair chase. Mm. Last time at Leperson, it was a funny race. I'd say Rachel would love to have another go. She got there a little mm. bit too soon. But it's the jump. But I think if he jumped better in last year's Gold Cup, he might have won. And I think his jumping is oh, better this year. Oh, When you say a horse got there too soon in a race... I mean, if horses get there too, so Cheltenham's the last place you want to go with them, isn't it? Like, you know what I mean? You've got you to gotta, you gotta stay on strongly and, 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 I just, and I don't be know, able I... to pull out a little bit more. Just remember uh, when he won the previous year mm. with Daryl Keefe on board. Lastminute.com. It was last minute and he flew home. So you said he needed every yard of the trip. Mm. So... Mm. Mm. I'm a bit Aplutar. If the rain came and hopefully it does come on Wednesday, I would be a Royal Pagai fan each way, but I think Aplutar is most likely winner. Best bets on Friday. Finish the week on a high for us, Kills. Oh, God. It's so hard. No, it's hard. It's hard. I fancy <clears throat> Potential. Right? Changing no, a wheel. He's going to win here. the Gold Cup. I've told everybody I'm going to. Uh, I'm getting out of here first thing on Friday morning. I'm going down the local pub and I did a preview there and I told everybody there's going to be a lot of red faces when Potential at wins. So I'm going to be there and prove it. He loves his job, really, by the way. He does. <laughs> Nat, your best bet on Friday? Quite like Hillcrest in the Albert Bartlett. Got a really good shout. Um, obviously, Galvin in the Gold Cup. Basically, I could go through the card if you want. Yeah, um, And I do like um, Ellie May. Yes. You told me you'd done no work for the last two days. I, I lied. <laughs> I like Ellie May in the Paddy Powers Mares. For you, Mick? Uh, I don't know whether you call it Ginto or Ginto. Ginto. Ginto in the Albert Bartlett. I think Ginto in the Albert Bartlett for you. I'm going to take you on with Hillcrest. I'm a massive Hillcrest fan. I thought he was brilliant. At Haydock, that's Friday at Cheltenham. Ruby, well to have you. Uh, would you mind if I pick your brain for a minute? Usual stuff that time of year again. Coming up to Cheltenham, so I have to come up with a blockbuster offer for the customers. So uh, Your name is over the door, so yeah, whatever you want. Look, I just want to run a couple of these by you. I've got a couple of um, options here. So we have money back for horse finish second, paying four places each way in races with 12 or more. We've got maybe playing out in a place to horse as a winner or refunding if you're horse. Whoa, 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 whoa. Way too complicated. Just give everybody a free bet. What do you mean? Just give everybody a free bet on the first day of the Chapman Festival. Simple. Right, so like a free bet for everyone on day one. 
Okay, well, I'm going to have to have a chat with the traders and the... Paddy, 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 Paddy. You are Paddy Power. You can do better than that. Free bet for day one and a free bet for day two as well. How about it? I'm not surprised. I'm going to be laughed out of the room by these bean counters, Matt. It's just not as easy as that. Paddy, three is my favourite number. Free bet day one, day two, day three. Make it a hat trick. Um, thank you for your input. Uh, gentlemen, I appreciate the time and all that. I kind of see where you're coming from. But there's just no chance. We're just not going to get away with that. Finance will never let that Good happen. shout, lads. Paddy Power are giving a fiver free bet on days one, two and three of Cheltenham. That's 15 quid's worth of free bets. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus. Be gamble aware. Dot org. Ready for another cup? Keels, yeah, Keels is going into the kitchen. Okay, it's time for the best bets of the week. If if uh, you were to tell viewers just to have one bet for the week, Keels, what would it be? Uh, it would be Alaphilippe for me in the protects with the fancy in the headphone suit. Okay, Alaphilippe for Keels. Uh, I'm going to go for Statler in the National Hunt Chase against all the Shrewdies who don't think he'll stay, don't, don't think he jumps well enough, but I'm a big Statler fan. Fiona? Yeah, I've actually got one in the Ultima here, Noble Yates, um, the Whaley Cohens. I think they paid a pretty penny. What was it, 290000 or something for this horse? Um, yeah, plenty to like. I think it can improve under Emmett Mullins, the trainer. Sam Whaley Cohen, of course, on board, so Noble Yates. Big Grand National fancy, sold by Paul Byrne, a former colleague of mine. Yeah. Mick Fitzgerald, your best bet of the week at Cheltenham? Edward Stone in the Arkham. Okay, Edward Stone for Mick. Now, we all have to agree, right? We have to have a conference now because Paddy Power have kindly given us a 100 euro charity bet between us. Okay, so we just have to pick one between us that we all agree on. So who wants to be team captain? Mick? Not oh, Paul Keeley's team captain. He's the best Keels. judge. Oh, thanks, Mick. Well, you know, Dave, well, obviously. Dave, so. Dave, let's be realistic here. <laughs> Paul Keeley's the best judge. Yeah. Paul Keeley is and by if far it's the charity, best. we really uh, want to sure, we well, win. We'd better have it on Alaphilippe then. Alaphilippe in the Potemps final yeah. is our 100 euro charity bet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, there we go. We've done it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of Ala Philippe as well. So I think I agree. Good chance, Mick. You're happy. Yeah, big. Happy fan. with selection. Very happy. Uh, okay, Ala Philippe in the Pretems final. That is the second race, the two ten on Thursday. That's a lot of tease to say for an Irishman, but it's the, <laughs> the two ten on Thursday for uh, Ala Philippe in the Pretems final. So we've got there. We've uh, four fantastic days to look forward to. What are you looking forward to most, Mick? I'm just wondering what kind of socks you're going to have on for Wednesday. <laughs> I, 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 I was flying last night and my wife went and went into, you I would say, socks, pennies or you? somewhere. You nicked buy. her socks? I nicked her socks, yeah. And she got me loads of socks and boxers and the whole oh. thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're still in the honeymoon period. Oh, now. you've got all nice, <laughs> yeah, yeah. clean, new. Yeah, ties and everything. So what are you most looking forward to? I'm looking forward to getting there first thing in the morning and watching the atmosphere build up. I love that. Yeah. Right, you know, a little bit later than normal. Now we're, now we're doing this show because it used to be like eight o'clock in the morning. I used to get there, but I love watching it. People come in and the atmosphere build up and they get noisier and noisier. It, I, do you know what? It's it, when you're when you're riding and you go there, like it, it's you have to be there early to try and beat the crowds. But when you're in, then you're like you've got two hours to wait, and you're like, right, you know what am I going to do? And and you're like, you just want to get there, just want to get going. And once you get going. You just think, right, next race, next race, what chance have I got? What chance have I got? Did I've you got... used to suffer with nerves? No. Does he look no. nervous? No. <laughs> no. But like if you're Unflappable. riding a favourite in a gold cup or something, are you not like Oh listen, give it to me. Really? You know, yeah, it's a bit like taking a penalty. I wanna you just give me the ball. You know, if I wanna have the opportunity to ride a good horse in a good race with a chance. That's what when you're a young lad growing up, Dave, that's what you want. You want the opportunity. People dream of it. Give it to me. Well, I love that attitude. I wish I had it. What's your plans for the week? Are we going to see you on ITV, Mick? Yeah, looking forward You're to it. You're ditching us. Is this your warm-up? This is yeah, your this is doing your drills Just before the match. Just trying to make all of our notes, aren't yeah. you? Open show uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and on in the afternoons then for four days. But, okay. you know, looking forward Busy. to it. It's going to, be, it's going to be mega. You know, crowds back this year. I think that roar on the opening day, opening race, is going to be special. Well, we're looking forward to seeing you as well. We won't see much of you because we'd be too busy working, won't we, kids? You'll be flat out tipping every you day. You will be. No, you, you do be. a tipping page every, every day. I know what I'm tipping every day already. Okay. I know. I'll be done. I'll be wandering about. Enjoying myself. No, I'll be working. Yeah. <laughs> and me and Keels are going to be here in these seats every day for the next week. You're going to be sick of us by the time Friday comes along. And Nat, you're with us tomorrow. And Wednesday. Oh, and Wednesday. Aren't I? 
I think so. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I yeah. think I am. Yeah. And then um, Racing Post in the afternoon in London, Thursday, Friday. But I'm looking forward to the champion chase because for me, it's absolutely the epitome of a thoroughbred. Speed, jumping, two mile, bob on, love and it. And Shishkin. And we have Shishkin. Oh, God, yeah, no, amazing. And just, and like you say, just the atmosphere, the curtain rays of the crowds. Um, I'm not really into the shopping or all that malarkey. Are just, you not? No, not really. No. I will have a Guinness or two. Yeah, well, it depends on if Keels gets his way or not. Yeah, we could be going straight <laughs> to the race course after the show. I'm going on the pull in the Guinness village. <laughs> <laughs> seven, seven years on, Matt. Seven years on. Seven years, I know. Crikey. I did say to him, oh, I could go to the shopping village. I'm not a big shopper, but I was told no. no. Negative. No. Negative. Just in case. Just, just in just case. the Guinness village, yeah. Absolutely. Um, and, and today we're going to go out to the track, aren't we, Keels? Are you going to stay here? No, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to stay here. I've got my own little set up with my uh, laptop and a big screen in there. So Keels has got the off. biggest computer you would ever it's see in your life. It's like the size of this it's chair. A, it's a monitor. It's a monitor. Mo oh, monitor, sorry. Like a gaming monitor. monitor. It is, yeah. yeah. You could sunbathe today. I expect to lovely? see Tetris or something on it, so I did. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's going to be a fantastic week. Uh, we're here every day and um, we can't wait to try and give you a few winners along the way Ala Philippe the whole week now depends on Ala Philippe so it does it's going to be 10 to 1 we're trying to raise some 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 much needed funds for charity 1000 quid hopefully if if Ala Philippe can do the business in the Pretems final uh thanks for joining us folks Mick pleasure to have you beside me this is my maiden voyage with you well, I think you've done a very good job you have very I give job. myself about a 7 out of 10. I think I got there too soon. But I think you get a 10 out of 10 for the haircut. Yeah, the haircut was a bit and tight. The socks. Yeah. <laughs> I give myself a 1 out of 10 because I unplugged my mic was about to walk off when the ad was on because I thought we were finished. Yes. Keels, you know what my mission for the week is? To get <laughs> you in a tie. Keels By the end of the week, we're going to get Keels in a tie. I wearing, wearing a tie. I hate ties. Yeah, well, I, I think over. it's just some croissants and coffee and stuff. That's mm. what I'm going for. Yeah, budget, low budget stuff here now. Yeah. <laughs> low budget stuff. But listen, that's it. Uh, it's been... A terrific hour. I hope you'll all agree. Um, we're, we can't wait to join you here every day. Half eight every day. It is Good Morning Cheltenham. Thanks to our sponsors, Paddy Power. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to come back tomorrow.